Hello everyone, Sodley here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a scalable, super fast and efficient fortress farm for your Minecraft Bedrock Edition worlds. This fortress farm is a great wither skeleton farm. It's basically a beacon factory. It can produce around 2700 wither skulls per hour and this farm also produces a ton of bones, coal, blaze rods, arrows and even a little bit of magma cream too. As a bonus, this farm can be made any size that you want to so feel free to to make it much smaller than what I show in today's video. So let's talk about the rates of the farm, shall we? Because we're sending all the mobs from the nether to the overworld, we can only AFK for a little while at a time before we cause too much lag in the world. But this farm produces 112 mobs every single minute that you use the farm, so you really don't need to use it that much. This includes all of the blazes, skeletons, wither skeletons, and magma cubes that you're going to be getting. Excluding all of the loot from the wither skeletons, you're still going to be getting 6,576 items items per hour. Now I've decided to separate out the loot from the wither skeletons because there are two different ways of killing them. As you can see we have the really good way which is using a charged creeper. This will give you approximately 2700 skulls every hour and it will also give you 3900 bones and coal per hour. This chest right here is what you'll get in just five minutes of using the farm. As you can see if you're getting this every five minutes you really don't need to worry about using it that often. It's pretty overkill. And even if you don't want to use charged creepers and you just want to kill things with a looting sword, you're still getting 324 skulls per hour and an additional 8,300 bones and coal per hour. As you can see, you're getting 27 skulls every 5 minutes. So if you decide to kill absolutely everything in this farm with a looting 3 sword, you're going to be getting close to 15,000 items per hour. That's not including the swords or the junk armor weapons or bows. Let's take a closer look at how exactly this fortress farm works. So if you're not aware, nether fortresses, ocean monuments, pillager outposts, and witch huts all have specific spawn spots and mobs will only spawn on those specific blocks. So all of the mobs in your nether fortress, all the blazes, cubes, with the skeletons, skeletons, etc. They will all spawn on these exact blocks with a block in their head so they get instantly pushed down this little tube and then they'll get pushed into a nether portal by this piston right here removing them from the mob cap instantly and then they're just sitting in the overworld waiting for you to deal with them this allows us to get a lot of spawns very very quickly because we don't have to slowly kill them in the nether we deal with all the killing in the overworld and this significantly boosts our rates this one right here has about 47 spawn spots and this is just what I can make work with this particular nether fortress. Either way, you can build this farm whatever size you want to, so if you don't feel like taking on this big of a project, you could build just like this little section right here and just have 10 spawn spots and that would still be a very good farm. Back in the overworld, we have a lot of mobs in our overworld side kill chamber. This thing looks like it's got some complicated redstone, but it's actually all pretty simple. And basically what we're doing is we're filtering out all the wither skeletons from everything else. So when you first get to this area, there's going to be hundreds of mobs in this nether portal right here. And all of these skeletons, blazes, and magma cubes will go down into your trident killer. We then have a system to put all of our wither skeletons down into a blast chamber. And then we can blow these guys up with a charge creeper or kill them by hand. Overall, this is the easiest way that I've found to separate these guys out. And it gives you the best possible rates for wither skull drop. Drops. Now that you know exactly how this farm works, so let's go over how you use it step by step real quick. That way there's no confusion and you don't mess anything up or lag out your world. So this farm is best used with two players. One here in the nether of King and another in the overworld at the kill chamber preventing your mobs from despawning. The job of the nether player is to churn on the farm and then you basically just stand here for as long as you want to. But I would recommend only AFKing about five minutes at a time. A real quick note right here you might notice that we have a lot of magma cubes i'm currently in a basalt delta so this is about as bad as you'll ever see it but these guys do jump off the platform and randomly despawn so they're not actually that big of a deal on the farm and they're not really hurting anything if you want to manually despawn them just walk about 20 blocks in this direction once you're done AFKing in the nether, you can simply go ahead and churn off your farm and we simply go through our player portal. This will take us far away from the kill chamber and the overworld. As you can see, we're about two to 300 blocks away from the kill chamber. Due to portal linking, this is about as close as you can get it. 
Once you get to the overworld, you're going to have an explosion of mobs and all of these guys are going to be trying to get into that trident killer. What you'll need to do is, of course, kill these medium magma cubes and then flick on this lever right here. That will push any stragglers into the trident killer. Once everything is in there, you can turn on the trident killer. That will hold all of the blazes down and then that will just kill everything in a nice little blender right there and give you the looting three effect if you're holding a looting sword. We can then go ahead and turn off this clock and turn off this block filter right here here as well and this will allow us to drop all of the wither skeletons down into one area this lever right here retracts a couple of blocks at the head height of the wither skeletons and shoots some snowballs out forcing all of the wither skeletons into one area this is about the best way that i've found to reliably sort these guys from the rest of the mobs some of them will end up on this block right here so you can simply press that button and push absolutely everything down into this blasting chamber if you want to you can then go ahead and collect yourself a charge creeper and a minecart right here that guy will fall down into this hole you can throw a healing potion at all of the wither skeletons to get experience from them simply light that guy with a flint and steel hide away and then everyone blows up and you get one skull per skeleton as you can see the trident killer is a little bit slow when it comes to killing the blazes so if you feel like it you can open up this trapdoor right here and actually smack all of these guys' feet i guess is what they would be so if you feel like getting a little bit of manual experience and just directly killing these guys a little bit faster then that is also an option either way all of the items from these guys will go down into your storage and as you can see you get quite a bit of junk and then of course you can also collect the experience directly from right here too once all the mobs are dead, this should be the default position of your farm. Both of your lower levers should be down, and both of your upper levers should be up. I know it's a little bit complicated, and the order of operations here is a little bit convoluted, but it is the best way to sort out all the wither skeletons from the rest of the mobs. If you don't care at all about using charge creepers, then you can just put one trident killer on either side, and basically get rid of like all the redstone. A neat side effect of using charge creepers in this farm is that if you blow up one while you have things in your trident killer, it'll actually deal enough damage to the skeletons to kill them, and then you can actually get regular skeleton skulls in addition to to wither skeleton skulls from the same farm. One final note, if you are using this farm in a single player and you have a very low simulation distance, then unfortunately you need to teleport to the kill chamber in the overworld in order to prevent all those mobs from despawning. And the only way to teleport to that kill chamber is to set your spawn there and then die. And what you want to do for this basically is to turn off the farm, empty your inventory of everything of value, and then just die pretty much anywhere in the nether. And then you will respawn, aka teleport, to your kill chamber in the overworld. And then all of your mobs are here and you can use the farm like normal. Unfortunately, this is really the only way to do this unless you have two players. If you have a second player, just tell them to AFK right here. And then you don't need to worry about any of this because they will never despawn. If we had some better portal linking mechanics, you might be able to get that portal close enough, but without that, it's either dying or having two players, which is rather unfortunate, but honestly, you get a lot of experience from using this thing anyway, so... I think it's kind of worth it. And let's jump into the tutorial, shall we? For your convenience, there's a full materials list down in the description of the video. That way you know everything you need to build. And of course, there's also a world download down there as well. That way you can check out this farm in person. The first part of this tutorial is going to be mostly in creative. This is by far the easiest and most time effective way of doing things. So what you want to do is you want to find the world seed of the world that you play in. So if this right here is the world that you actually want to build, the wither skeleton farm in then you'll need to get your world seed and then we're going to create a creative world with that exact same world seed this is very important that way it has the exact same generation as your survival world we're going to be using this little creative copy in order to find a good nether fortress to build in and we're going to be using this creative copy to find all of our spawn spots as well again this is going to save you hours and hours in survival if you're not the fortress is all the way into a mountain or any form of landmass. that is going to take you a lot more time to spawn proof you also want to find another fortress that's probably not in a basalt delta because the magma cubes really are the biggest pain in this entire farm 
Now, you're also looking for a good nether fortress that has a lot of these corridors. You can know if it's a corridor or not due to these windows right here. These areas have the highest density of spawn spots. I originally thought it was these walkways out here in the open that had all the spawn spots, but these walkways actually have very, very few spawn spots. So for the most part, you can ignore all parts of the nether fortress that look like this. But if you find another fortress that has a lot of areas with these big boxy rooms, staircases, or tons of these corridors with windows, then you know that you found yourself a very good area that's going to have a lot of different spawning spaces in it. If you're having a hard time finding good nether fortresses in creative, you can use a website called chunkbase.com to locate your nether fortresses. It will be linked down below. You put in your world seed, select bedrock edition, select the nether. So basically, this is going to show you all of the nether fortresses in your world. You can click on these little things and that will tell you the exact coordinates of it. So then you can just teleport around from fortress to fortress until you find one that is good. And now it's time that we clean up our nether fortress at least a little bit. Basically, no matter what, you're going to have some terrain that's in the way. So we are just going to clean this up a little bit to make it so that we can see the entirety of the nether fortress. So give yourself a command block using this command right here. We're going to place that down and put that into repeat mode. This right here is the main command that you'll be using. It'll be down in the description so that you can copy paste it. But basically, this is going to be removing all of the nether rack that is around you. I would recommend setting up one of those for Blackstone for basalt and for magma blocks as well and then there's a slightly different command right here for flowing lava this is going to place a block of nether wreck at every single piece of flowing lava and a regular lava source so if we go ahead and turn all these on we can basically walk around and kind of world paint this entire area it will remove all of the blocks in the way and then we can see the entirety of the nether fortress this is very helpful for finding out where the boundaries of this thing are maybe finding additional rooms that are buried so go ahead and clean out the entire area around your whole nether fortress you do not need to do any of this in survival this is purely for ease of finding your spawn spots in creative and now it's time to start finding all of our spawn spots. So the first command block that you want to put down is a repeat unconditional needs redstone. And this is just a kill at E command. This is going to wipe out all the mobs in the area and give you a nice clean slate. The next command block that you need is a repeat unconditional needs redstone. And this is the command right here. This is going to be finding all of the wither skeletons in the world. And it's going to be placing a piece of concrete directly underneath them. The next command coming off of that one is going to be a chain, unconditional needs redstone, and this is another kill at E. Now, make sure that the arrow of this command block is pointing into this chain. As you can see, both the arrows are going along. That is important for these to work. So, and now if we turn on this one and then we turn off this dude, we can summon in a wither skeleton. And as you can see, it's going to have pieces of concrete placed underneath it. So, you might have guessed it, but now all we need to do is kind of wait for a while. And as you can see, pieces of concrete are being filled in all over the place. There are many different places in a nether fortress that things cannot spawn. So, what you need to do is you need to go around and remove all of these fences. You need to go around and remove all of the windows. And basically, if there's a corridor, you just need to remove all of the walls. And you need to remove the entirety of the ceiling as well. Basically, flatten this place. The reason why it's important to do this is because you can remove these walls. And there might actually be a spawning spot underneath that wall. And you won't see it on top of the build either. So the only way for you to find that spawn spot spot is to remove this wall also anywhere that you have a stair such as in these stairways you need to remove that and just leave a solid block underneath it of course fill commands can make your life a lot easier in situations like this as well you can use a command like this one to remove a large portion of the nether fortress and then you would use a similar one to remove these offenses so you can save yourself a lot of time here's a simple before and after of what your nether fortress should look like once you have removed all of the walls and you can find all all these spawn spots and now we can truly see the heart of this nether fortress and if you pay attention you'll notice that all of the walkways around the edges are terrible for spawn spots but these corridors really do pack them in 
that is an extreme amount of spawn spots right there. This is really like the ideal situation that you're looking for. If you see any doubled spawn spots like this one right here, this is just a mistake from the commands. It is because too many mobs spawned, one got pushed to the side, and then it filled in two blocks. From my experience, you will never have two spawn spots that are touching or even diagonal like this. So if you see this, then one of these is the wrong one and you can easily figure out which one is the true one. Place down yourself a sunflower that'll be facing east. Turn to your left and that is north. Turn to your left again and that is west. So this right here, of course, is the northwest. Mobs will always spawn on the northwest corner of these blocks. So if you have any of these markers in the north, northwest, or west of your spawning spot, then you know that these are the fake ones. Furthermore, you'll notice that all of these spawn spots are actually in a grid as well. So if you see one that doesn't fit that grid, it's very likely the doubled duplicate and it's not a real spawning spot. In order to figure out which spawning spots you can actually use in survival, I would recommend creating a 28 wide by 28 long square and try and line this up so that you can get as many spawning spots as possible within this square. If it's not within the square, then the nether portal is not going to link up to your central nether portal in the overworld and you're going to have a massive headache trying to get that portal linking correct. So move around this square as much as you need to to get as many spawn spots inside of it as you can now keep in mind if you have two that are like right on the edge we can still use these two but we'll need to use pistons to push the mobs actually into the square and into the nether portals that are within the square so if you got some right on the very edge we can make those work they're just going to be slightly less efficient than ones that are inside of the square now, I would only recommend doing this for ones that are like two to three blocks outside of it. Like, don't try and get these ones over here. It's just not going to be worth it. And now for the most tedious part, we need to write down the coordinates of every single one of these spawn spots that we have within the square or take a screenshot or do something that you can replicate in survival because now it is time to finally go over to your survival world, go to your nether fortress and actually place a marker block on every single coordinate that you have a spawning spot in this creative world. I imagine that you're probably going to be hopping back and forth between worlds quite often and I would recommend that you quadruple track that you have everything correct in the survival world before you start building the farm. Yeah, this is a painful process but you know what? It is way easier than doing this entire thing in survival trust me. Keep in mind that if you have haste 2 and you have efficiency 5 on your diamond pickaxe, then you can actually instant mine the nether brick. This is going to make your life a lot easier in survival mode when you're tearing out those walls and marking in your spawn spots. And yes, it is ironic that you need a beacon to build a beacon factory. So by this point in the tutorial, you should have all of your spawn spots that you want to use marked out in the farm. You should have your walls, ceilings, and fences in the area removed as well. So some Something like this is just a nice clean slate. To make things easier on you, I would recommend putting a marker slab on top of every single one of your spawn spots. This will prevent things spawning while you're building the farm. And now we need to do a lot more digging and you're definitely going to want yourself a beacon for this part because we need to go downwards by 12 blocks. So basically we're just going to flatten this entire area down by 12. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and this is going to give us enough room for all of our redstone all of our nether portals and everything like that we need to have the nether portals be 12 blocks down that way the light from the nether portals doesn't prevent any mobs from spawning in the farm and now it's time to figure out where our nether portals are going to be going so keep in mind that our nether portals are going to be going from the north to the south and all of our mobs are going to be falling off on the west side of the spawning spots. And of course, you can figure out which direction is which by placing down yourself a sunflower. These will always be facing east. Now, your layout of spawning spots is going to be different than what I have. So I'm going to tell you the general tips and tricks for how to place in these nether portals. So basically, we're going to be placing in a nether portal for each line of these spawning spots. And it's going to be going down the entire length of this build so that every single one of these spawn spots goes into the same nether portal. For spawn spots 
that are only a single block apart, like these ones right here, what you need to do is you need to place the nether portal underneath the westerly row. So basically go down to the ground beneath here and we're going to place in a line of temporary blocks underneath the western side. That's going to make it so that the mobs from this spawn spot drop down right here. They'll be pushed into the nether portal on this block. The mobs from this spawn spot will drop down onto this block right here. And then they'll also be pushed into the nether portal as well. So for ones that are only a single block apart, we can use one nether portal for both of these. If you have a line of spawn spots with a large gap to either side, it doesn't really matter what you do. So if we drop down to the layer below us here, we know that all the mobs are going to be falling down into this row. However, we can either push them to the right and have the nether portal directly underneath the spawn spots, or we can have the nether portal be right here and push them to the west. It really doesn't matter, and it's just going to be up to your personal preference, really. And finally, for spawn spots that are two blocks apart, we're going to go underneath these ones. We know that the mobs will fall right here, so we can place a piston to the east. We know that the nether portal goes right here to the west, and then we can do that for this one as well. There's a piston directly underneath the spawn spot, and then the nether portal right there. And then this one is the exact same, piston underneath the spawn spot, and then the nether portal would go right there as well. So as you can see, that is going to be three lines of nether portals for three lines of spawning spots. On the scale, nether portal linking is pretty wonky, so if you have any extra spawn spots on the edges, I'd recommend getting those nether portals as close as possible to the main bulk of your nether portals. Like for this one way out here, don't put your nether portal over here, I'd recommend putting that in as close as possible. All of these green lines represent where we need to have a nether portal, but before we install those, we need to install the rest of our pistons. So basically, you want to go around to every single spawn spot in the farm find out where the mobs are going to be falling down and then place in yourself a piston in order to push those mobs into where your nether portal is going to be now that all of the pistons are in place we need to wire them up with a redstone line so go to either the far left or the far right side of the build it doesn't really matter and we need to go two blocks over from the further most piston so that is one block and this is two and we're just going to place in a temporary platform right here so we need a repeater going into a solid block with a slab on top of it and that solid block needs to be lined up with your rows of pistons do this at every piston row intersection so this is what you should end up with at every row of your pistons and now we need to place some redstone between it so place in a couple pieces of redstone and behind every repeater you also want a block of a slab above it as well and yeah just do this for the entire redstone line going down once you have that installed, I would recommend putting a lever at the end of it just to make sure that all of your redstone does actually turn on and you haven't missed anything. But once that's working, you need to place a redstone line going to the right at every intersection, going directly into your pistons. And if it's the last piston in the row, then you can have that redstone going into a block. For regular rows of pistons that are doubled up, you'll need to have the redstone go underneath the piston and then continue along to the next one. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It is a really straightforward little thing to get all of this redstone installed. Once you run out of signal strength, you can simply grab yourself a repeater, plop that in there, and continue it along the row. And basically, just make sure that every single piston in every row is powered. And there we go. All of the pistons for the farm are now completely powered. Make sure that every single one of these has a block in front of it and underneath it for the mobs to actually stand on. And I would also recommend that you turn off this lever and make sure that all of your pistons turn off. And now we need to install all of the nether portals. So everywhere that you have a marker blocks in place, we need to remove remove these and place obsidian directly underneath of these and then of course we're just going to be building some standard three tall nether portals without the corners and you should be also putting slabs on top of these nether portals to prevent things from spawning on top of them keep in mind nether portals can only be 21 blocks long if you try and make it any longer then it just won't light so don't feel shy to break it up into two different portals so you need to find the rough center of your entire farm and the rough center Center of all of your nether portals for me that's about right here you need to take your coordinates and then times those by eight and build a nether portal at that location in the overworld and of course 
Getting to the other world is really easy. You just light one of these portals, go on through, and then you are pretty much at the rough location of where you need to be. So go ahead and figure out your exact coordinates, build a portal where it should be. Once your overworld portal is built, we need to go ahead and test all of our nether side portals and make sure they link to it correctly. So how you do this is you go to every far edge of your farm, like the far right corner, the far left corner, this corner over here, that corner over there, and you simply enter the nether portal at every spot where you have a piston, and that will confirm if that part of the farm is going to link to the overworld or not. So for example, if I go through this part of the farm right here, I know that this is going to take me not to the main portal. As you can see, it summons in a new portal. What you do in this situation is you break this frame and then you go back to the nether from your main portal. So we know that this spot right here doesn't teleport us to the correct location and we're just going to keep on trying that every block over until eventually we get it correct. And for me, this block right here does actually teleport us to the correct location in the overworld. You're very unlikely to have another portal that takes you to the wrong location unless you're trying to squeeze in additional spawn spots. These are the two spawn spots that are outside of my 28 by 28 area. And if I want to include these, then we actually need to shorten this portal and move the mobs into it so we're going to undo all this redstone so if you really want to include spawn spots that are outside of the main area what you need to do is make it yourself a piston staircase directly underneath them and that is going to funnel the mobs into the nether portal in a location that will actually teleport to the correct location in the overworld it's a super big hassle and you know what i really wouldn't bother with it and it's probably not worth the rates of the two additional spawn spots but if you really feel like getting two extra spawn spots out of your farm then this is how you do it and of course you need a piston staircase for each spawn spot once you know that all of your nether portals properly link to the overworld we need to go around to every single spawn spot and build up a glass tube to the west of all of the places so basically you can just kind of like pillar up from the bottom on all four sides and it just bring this glass tube all the way up to the layer of the slab that we placed in earlier and now we need three glass blocks above that slab to push the mobs down the hole. We need one additional glass block right there to prevent the blazes from flying out the farm. And then we need a solid block right there to prevent gas from spawning. And that is all you need to do. But you need to do this at every single spawning spot across the entire farm. Finding out where your AFK spot should be is a little bit complicated. But basically you want to go 24 blocks above your spawn spots. Our spawn spots are at Y level 60. So we're going to Y level 84. Now you can just AFK directly above the middle of the farm. That's perfectly fine. And we also need ourselves a walkway going about 20 to 30 blocks away. That way we can walk it down this, get to our player portal, and also despawn everything in the farm as well. Make this area safe by completely boxing in the AFK spot. Wiring up the redstone of your build is really simple. Basically, you just want this basic repeater clock right here. And then you're just running a redstone line all the way up to your AFK bridge. It's going to look really stupid, but I mean, it works. It turns off the farm and turns it on. So that's all you need. You don't need to worry about spawn proofing as much as you might think, but make sure that you spawn proof the entirety of the bottom platform of your build around all of your redstone and between all of your nether portals on top of all of your nether portals. Basically everywhere down here should be spawn proof in order to get you some better rates. Now, ideally you would spawn proof absolutely everything in the area, including the entire nether fortress. And I would highly recommend spawn proofing at least the nether fortress. But since you're gonna be using the farm for such a small duration, of time you don't actually need to worry about spawn proofing as much as you might think because you're going to be leaving the area so often things aren't going to have that much time to build up and decrease your rates as for your player portal and how you actually get to the overworld i'd recommend putting that about 20 to 30 blocks away from your afk spot hopefully at this distance it doesn't link to your main portal in the overworld basically if it keeps on linking or cross linking just just put it further away until it eventually works it's really just going to be a matter of getting lucky with it either way you're still going to be hundreds of blocks away from your kill chamber and the overworld and now it's time to build up the overworld side kill chamber so this is going to be your nether portal this is going to be you facing the nether portal and the left side is going to be our main trident killer so we need to go down six blocks below our 
portal right here and then install ourselves a little bit of a 4x4 platform that's lined up with another portal just like so. So this is going to be the floor of our trident killer. We can remove that pillar of blocks and now we need to install four pistons going in opposite directions just like this fill in all of these extra blocks on the edges and then facing the build we need an upper slab right here to keep in the baby magma cubes and then a trap door to keep in the experience and the items you can open this whenever you want to kill them manually we need a dropper in each one of these corners right here an observer facing each one of these going around in a circle and then of course a solid block behind each one of those observers as well we now need to place in some sticky pistons so a sticky piston right here two sticky pistons on the left side like so and then another one on the front side of the build and now we're going to fill in some glass blocks in all of these locations and this is going to be to keep the blazes from flying up that way they actually do get killed by the trident killer the left side and right side walls need to go all the way up to this layer on the nether portal. So go ahead and fill all of these in like so. And then the back wall also needs to go up to the same layer too. We actually don't need these two blocks right here. And now we're going to put in the main lever. I would recommend putting the lever on a different block from the rest of your build. That way it's just easy to spot and look at. So and now we're going to put a couple of upper slabs in all of these locations going around the build. And then a solid block right there redstone dust along this entire line and then a redstone torch right there so whenever this lever is flicked the trident killer is going to be off and it's going to be open allowing more mobs to spill into it whenever it is in the upwards position it's going to be locked locking down those blazes and it's going to be on as well Item collection is really easy. All you need is a hopper minecart anywhere underneath the center 2x2 of the Trident Killer. Send that into whatever item storage you want. And I would highly recommend a non-stackable item filter for all of the junk items. If you don't want to use any charge creepers at all, you can basically just build another one of these on the opposite side of the nether portal, and then all of your wither skeletons and everything will just go into two different trident killers. But that's not very fun, and you won't get like the insane amount of wither skulls that you should, so stay tuned to learn how to upgrade this for the wither skeleton blast chamber. To build the Wither Skeleton Sorter and a Pusher, we need to go into this area of the farm right here and place in two dispensers facing towards the nether portal. Place in an observer facing away from the farm, a redstone torch underneath that, and now we need to break out this block, place in a sticky piston facing forwards, and do that on the opposite side as well, so just like so. Place back in these glass blocks, and now we need to place in some redstone torches on the opposite sides of these sticky pistons with some solid blocks above them like so. Place in a couple more sticky pistons off of these blocks right here on the opposite side, and then some solid blocks on the fronts of these. These solid blocks are going to keep the Wither Skeletons from flying out the right side of the portal until we are ready for them. We're also going to place in four more solid blocks in these areas right here to keep the Wither Skeletons in. We're going to place in a hopper on top of each one of these dispensers with a double chest on top of both of those. You'll be filling up these with snowballs later. We need to place in an observer right here facing towards the glass and then another sticky piston right here as well to push that over. Go ahead and get a line of slabs out the back side of this going into a solid block right here and then redstone dust above all of that. Place another marker block right here with a lever on it and then whenever you flick that downwards that is going to let all the wither skeletons out the right side of the build and shoot snowballs at them to force them out of the nether portal. And now for the system that pushes all the mobs from the right side into the left side what we need to do is place in ourselves a temporary block right here and a sticky piston facing inwards another temporary block on the opposite side with another sticky facing in and then a regular piston facing towards the trident killer on the fronts of both of those pistons now we need to go ahead and place in a solid block on either side of those get in some temporary blocks into these areas right here with some pistons facing forwards as well go ahead and surround this glass on the bottom and the back side with some solid blocks and then remove that and place some redstone dust above all of that. 
We also need some more solid blocks in these areas right here. A solid block right here, observer facing away from the farm, observer facing towards the farm, and then a sticky piston facing that observer like so. And now we need a slab line connecting these solid blocks next to both of the sticky pistons to one another. That way we can power them with this redstone line. Place in your marker block and a lever for the lower line. This should extend all of the pistons to block mobs from going into your kill chamber and then this one up here is going to activate the pistons to push them all into the trident killer always have this one turned off until you've actually loaded into the area otherwise some mobs might glitch through these pistons and escape the farm so this should always be off and when the mob farm is completely empty of all mobs this one should be on so now we need to go ahead and fill in the walls of this area with some glass blocks and all of these areas and just fill that up all the way to the top of solid blocks that we have right here. Also, don't forget your lower slab at the base of the nether portal. That way you can kill your medium magma cubes. And the final thing that we need to push the wither skeletons into a one by one blast chamber is a regular piston right here with a piece of obsidian underneath it, a glass block above it. That way you can see if there's mobs right there and then your marker block with a button on it like so. And that will push everything down into this one by one. We're then going to go ahead and put a couple pieces of glass right here and then continue everywhere downwards from here with obsidian. This is going to be going directly into our blast chamber and we're blowing up charge creep so go a little bit extra heavy on the obsidian. The blast chamber is really easy. You want to go down from this hole right here on the side by six pieces of obsidian and then place in yourself a temporary block right there. Go over by three blocks, up by another three blocks, and then out by two blocks like so. Place in yourself a temporary block right here. Go all the way to the ceiling of obsidian and then go out by a few pieces of obsidian right here until you have this exact shape. All your wither skeletons will be dropping down right there. Your charge keeper will be arriving from the right side and dropping down on that. And that's all there is to it. We're going to place in one extra piece of obsidian right here and then a slime block in this location. That way we can throw healing potions at the wither skeletons and they won't die. So now all you need to do is to fill in the back wall with obsidian. And that's pretty much as straightforward as you would imagine. Just fill in absolutely every single one of these spaces. Again, it's charge creeper blast. You want to go a little bit heavy on the obsidian, especially around all of these blocks. That way things don't break. The front wall is also pretty easy. Basically just go ahead and fill in a straight line of obsidian all the way up to the very top of this thing. And then we want to continue along this line of obsidian all the way to this edge. We can actually go ahead and place powered rail directly inside of this tube. And then you want to store your charge creepers about 20 or so blocks away from the blast chamber. That way the creepers exploding don't kill the creepers that are in storage so down here at the bottom you also want to place in a piece of obsidian right here that way it protects you from the brunt force of the creeper explosion and you also want to fill in a nice obsidian floor and this entire area you can customize everything from here on out as much as you want to but i would recommend that you have plenty of room to back away from that charge creeper basically if you're within about 15 blocks of these charge creepers even if you are completely behind a wall you're still going to be taking a little bit of damage so be careful and just stay far away from them when you are lighting them now the charge creeper storage is actually super straightforward you just want a rail line a dispenser facing upwards with a solid block and then i literally just have a three by three by three cube with some water pushing into this corner so you drop your charge creepers in there and then you dispense a minecart they hop into it and they go directly into your blast chamber now you also want a little bit of a wall right here just to block their line of sight that way they don't see you and blow you up this slime block will sometimes be destroyed when you blow up a creeper but most of the times it'll drop off as an item either way just keep a couple extra on hand and of course make sure to light the nether portal and throw a trident into the trident killer your farm is finally ready to use, so go ahead and quickly remove all of these slabs from your entire build, and this will immediately allow mobs to spawn. You might want to do this with invisibility, or just kind of like YOLO it and just go super quick. And as you can see, we're already getting a whole bunch of mobs in the farm. Now, it's worth mentioning that even though the farm is turned off, mobs can still go into the nether portals, so don't AFK here even if it is turned off. So if we turn on the farm, absolutely everything is going to get pushed into the nether portal, 
portals and as you can see a lot more things are spawning now that the mob cap is freed up a little bit and that is all there is to it please refer to the earlier parts of the video for a full guide on how exactly to use this farm in the best manner and thank you ever so much for watching please consider leaving the biggest like on this video that you ever have it's taken me a couple of weeks to design and record this video so i hope that you have greatly enjoyed it and get a bunch of use out of it if you're new here then consider subscribing as well so that you don't miss future videos and tutorials like this one on the channel and thank you ever so much for watching to this point in today's video i really do appreciate it and i'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one and then there was silence